Rodriguez? Here. Martin? Waters? Here. Mary of a quorum. All right, let's say the pledge. Yes. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, just a quick reminder, anybody wanting to add his or her name to the list of public invited to be heard, uh, raise your hand now. Um, if you don't get, your, get on the list, you won't be able to speak during the first round of public invited to be heard, but you will be able to speak at the end of the meeting. Um, everybody gets three minutes, and then after that we'll cut you off. But anyway, approval of minutes. Do I have a motion for the approval of the January 28, 2020 regular session minutes? All right. Second. It's been moved by Dr. Waters and it was seconded by Councilmember Peck. Peck. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? All right, it passes unanimously. And uh, just by way, uh, Marsha Martin, uh, she's not present only because she's not feeling well. So oh. she's ill. Um, next, the gender revisions and submission of documents and motions to direct the city manager to add agenda items to future agendas. Does anyone want to say or do anything? Dr. Waters? Yeah, this is not, this is not direction to staff. It's really just to confirm with council members in our Friday retreat, I, I brought up the topic of the 529 jump program and, um, and what I think the school district needs in order to get behind that the way we'd like them to uh, and that that would require us basically backing the, the kindergartners and then doing the outreach. Mayor Bagley has agreed to work with me on that outreach. Yep. I have spoken with former council member Finley. She's willing to help with that since that was kind of her project. I just want to make certain in this setting that I'm still good to go with that. I just don't want to surprise anybody. Yes? Yeah, I think okay. you're good to go. Anybody Thank object? You. Thanks. All right, that's it. You're good to go. Thanks. All right, let's move on. City Manager, do you have a report? No report, Mayor Council. All right, great. Any, uh, no special reports or presentations tonight, right? All right. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to first call public invited to be heard. Again, you have three minutes. Um, address the chair, and uh, we'll go with Regina Cheney first. My name is Regina Cheney, and I live at 416 Main Street. On November 19th, 2019, I filed an open records request with our city clerk for emails to or from Councilwomen Peck and Christensen using their personal email for city business. I recall at the time Polly said she had six emails from her personal account for city business and Peck said she had none. During the clerk's first round of investigation that concluded 12-12-19, the findings were 1,615 emails, 177 of these messages were under legal review. The second query by the city clerk completed 12-27-19, revealed that there were 2,043 emails sent or received by Peck or Polly. 359 of these were documents, 10 messages, confidential in nature or otherwise falling, out, falling under an exception to the right of inspection under CORA. There were still 177 messages under legal review. The third and final response to my CORA request came on January 21st of this year. That review has been completed and addressed the 177 messages still under legal review. The total number of emails from Peck and Christensen isn't zero or six. It's 3,658 emails. Why is that? As recently as November 24th, 2019, a mere five days after my complaint was filed, Christensen again sent an email to a private account saying, I'm writing you on my private email because it is more convenient. Nowhere in this email does she actually give the recipient her government email address. <coughs> Why is that? If she means by convenient, it's under the public radar. That's true. It's inconvenient to use one email address for your business and one for your personal, but I bet every one of you has two, me two email accounts. Citizens have a right to expect ethical behavior from our city council a manner that will preserve or restore the public's trust in government. We're talking about 3,658 emails here. Ethical violations erode public trust. Ethics regulations effectively inform officials what conduct is permitted and prohibited in public service. I think the entire city council knows that use of personal email 
for city business is prohibited. However, without a means to enforce the ethical requirements, the regulations become largely meaningless. That's what we have here. Why is that? Because there are no consequences. Nothing to deter, to deter further use of personal email accounts. There has been absolutely no ownership by Pecker Christensen of this abuse of public trust. There has been no ownership of anything. No public apology. We've seen only indignation. I call on city council to show councilwomen Peck and Christensen that there are consequences, and I demand a public apology. Thank you. All right, Kevin Garter. That's Kevin Garton, but I won't uh, hold Garden. you accountable. For Thank, my you, for, for Thank, my you. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Garton. Thank you. For handwriting. Thank you. You might uh, want to. First of all, I'd like to thank you, uh, each and council member, for your service to the citizens of Longmont. And with that, I think we all recognize that leaders are held to a higher accountability and responsibility. And with that comes ethical behavior. And my question to the city council is what are you doing to address the lack of an ethics committee and a lack of an ethics process? especially in light of this uh, revelation of the violation of the Sunset Act with regards to emails. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Justin Stober. Hello, I'm Justin Stober. I live at 2410 Winding Drive. I am here today to talk about, uh, I guess, item number 11B, the Pepler neighborhood concept plan amendment. Um, today I'd like to urge you to vote against this amendment. Um, just the ethics violations that happened through the whole planning process for, for this amendment should make you stop and think. I have provided evidence of these ethic, ethics violations. It's sickening. They've, the planning department, I believe, has just tried to ramrod this through. It's unacceptable. Um, the developer has said many times in these meetings, and they're here tonight, that 100% engineering has already been done for this, uh, this project. That's not an excuse to ignore the concept plan and what is promised in that concept plan to the community, especially around Prairie Village. It's not an excuse. If they did 100% engineering work, that's on them. We do not need to accept this, this plan change. What they have come up with and offered the city is two relatively useless pieces of land to try to satisfy this the, the uh, statement and the concept plan. It's not anything that can be used for civic purposes as dictated in the concept plan, and it's, it's egregious. I mean, it's untenable. What they're doing is just ramrodding this entire thing through, and I'm, I'm done with it. I'm sorry, but as council members, like, you guys need to look out for the community, all right? It's not just about a developer. The developer is coming here and trying to give you two useless pieces of land that the city is going to say, we can't do anything with, right? Of course, you, <laughs> the, every department in the city is going to look at these little tracks and say, we can't do anything with. Did the developer come up with anything new? Not in your agenda, not tonight. Nope, because 100% engineering has already been completed. That is not an excuse just to approve this project going forward. They have a responsibility to the community around Prairie Village and to the, uh, the city residents for a land donation for civic purpose, all right? And what they're offering is nothing. They're hoping that you, the city turns it down. They're hoping that it, we turn it down. I'm not gonna stand for it. I think it's wrong. And, you know, I, I've already provided the city planning department with all the evidence. I provided some of the council members here today with some of the evidence of the ethics violations of our planning department to get to this point. It's untenable and it's not right. Do not approve this concept plan change. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dwayne Lease. Hello, my name is Dwayne Lease. I live at 2686 Pearl Howlett Road. Uh, I came um, 
to thank the city for the tagging uh, abatement program. Uh, we had a tagging on the back of our building at, on the corner of Long's Peak and Main. And uh, I had spent probably about two, well, probably four to maybe six hours just looking into how to get rid of the tagging and working on it. Finally got a uh, response and the gentleman came out and did it. But what my thinking is, is that there should be a very obvious and easy way for someone such as myself who can afford to pay for this service to be able to contribute to the city for the cost of what is essentially a, a valuable service to myself. I don't think it should be a, a something that should be charged to every person in the community because some people can't afford it. But having the city not tagged is a value to all of us. I think it's extraordinarily important. And I want to thank you all for the work that you do. And hang in there. Keep working hard. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mr. Mitchell. Thank you, Mr. Lease. All right, let's go on to the consent agenda. Don, Ms. Quintana, City Clerk. Mayor, item uh, 8E, Resolution 2020-17 has been removed by staff from the consent agenda. It will be brought back due to an error in one of the attachments. So 8A is Resolution 2020-13, a resolution of the Longmont City Council approving the intergovernmental agreement between the city acting by and through its water utility enterprise and the Northern Colorado Water Conservancy District for location of a camera to monitor the St. Brain Creek. 8B is Resolution 2020-14, a resolution of the Longmont City Council approving an intergovernmental agreement between Boulder County and the City of Longmont for the Environmental Sustainability Matching Grant Program. 8C is Resolution 2020-15, a resolution of the Longmont City Council approving an intergovernmental agreement between Boulder County, City of Boulder, City of Longmont, City and County of Bloomfield, Town of Erie, City of Lafayette, City of Louisville, Town of Superior, Town of Nederland, Town of Lyons, regarding the Boulder Area Trails Mobile Application Project. And 8D is Resolution 2020-16, a resolution of the Longmont City Council approving the intergovernmental agreement between the City and State of Colorado Department of Labor and Employment, Division of Oil and Public Safety for compliance with the Elevator and Escalator Certification Act. All right, Dr. Waters. I move uh, the consent agenda. Second. All right, it's been moved. The consent agenda has been moved by Councilman Waters and seconded by Councilman Peck. Any deb debate, dialogue, questions? All right, let's vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right. The That's enough. Yes, we're done. No, so the, the, that, that passes unanimously. All right, let's move on to ordinances on second reading and public hearings on any matter. First is 9A, Ordinance 2020-08, a bill for an ordinance authorizing the City of Longmont to execute a lease extension of real property known as 1140 Boston Avenue to Longmont Wind Air Company. Are there any questions from Council? The staff has a report, have a report, anything like that? All right, seeing none, let's go ahead and open this for a public hearing on Ordinance 2020-08. Would anyone in the public like to speak on this matter? All right, seeing no one, let's go ahead and close the public hearing. Can I have a motion? All right, I, uh, Council Member Peck. I move uh, 02, 0 202008. I'll second that. It's been moved by Council Member Peck, seconded by myself. Let's vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. All right, passes unanimously. All right, uh, no items have been removed from the consent agenda. So let's go ahead and uh, move on to general business. 11A, DSC and creation station space needs. Mayor Bagley, members of council, Joni Marsh, assistant city manager. So the item before you this evening is a request for council to give direction regarding the creation station, which is the little building attached to the development services center. It used to be a print, the print shop for the city. Um, community Services has been using that at the direction of Council. Council actually voted and made a motion four years ago. Um, at this time, we're really out of space at the Development Services Center and are looking for um, places to put staff, um, which don't exist. So we have spoken with Nancy at the library, Karen Roney, as well as um, Jeff Friesner at REC, and taken a look at what that programming looked like and that whether or not they would be able to relinquish that space and they have determined that would be reasonable for them to do so. So we're just asking tonight for council to give some formal direction if we could move forward with moving into the 
Creation Station with Development Services Center employees. So moved. Second. All right, it's been moved by myself and seconded by Councilmember Peck. Just a real quick um, question. Let me say, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Rodriguez, for the record. Go ahead. Sorry. Thank you, Mayor Bagley. Just a real quick question. Uh, but prior to the uh, Creation Station being a print shop, was it at one point a, a morgue for the city? Mayor Pro Tem Rodriguez, you are correct. Okay, I just wanted to put that because I'm a little bit we of don't a history. I like to now. emphasize the creepy nature of that. <laughs> but I like to. <laughs> anyway. Yes, I'll be, I'll, be, I'll be in support. Thank you. I would move an amendment to make that the new council offices. I'm just kidding. Dr. Waters? Uh, w was it also used as a maker space? in conjunction with the library? Um, you know, I think at one point there was some use going on in that space prior to really the conversion to p legitimate programming that went from the library and the recreation center, yes. So for from one time. extreme, from a morgue to a maker space. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty versatile space. Um, so the one, the, the, the one point I would want to make, I understand it has not been utilized well as a maker space. Uh, but I do want to make the point that um, the library is 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 um, we are overpopulated for the capacity of the library, in my opinion, as, the, as our liaison to the library board. Uh, it is the reason we're going through a feasibility study, and just a reminder that as we as we receive the results of that feasibility study, we've got uh, for people who care about makerspace, we've got a, a, a series of meetings scheduled. Uh, now, through the rest of this month and into March, uh, the, that feasibility study, I assume we're going to get uh, by the end of April, maybe. Um, and, that's, and, I, and I think that's a pretty close time frame. A and I'm, I'm assuming that we'll see in that feasibility study some recommendations or possibilities for um, uh, kind of state-of-the-art maker space in conjunction with what a 21st century library should look like. So. I just want to make the point, I, I, as I drive by that or you walk out of Ziggy's having met with somebody for, you know, some issue, and I look across and I see that space and think about what we, what we could be doing with the kind of, with, with, with state-of-the-art makerspace for our creative class in, in Longmont. And uh, I'm, I, I support, you need the space, I, I'm going to vote for this. Um, but, I, but I want to make the point that we need space for those members of our community who have talents to bring and ideas to around which they want to create and I want to keep that high on our list of or at least vi high high visibility and high on the list of priorities as we go forward with the with the feasibility study uh, Councilor Christensen um, I, I understand we're all kind of <coughs> all the city offices really <laughs> need need more space um, I do think this is a good use of the Lashley Street station because it'll help it's right up the street from, uh, it's very close to the elementary school and it's also right up the street from the youth center. So there might be some more synergy to be gotten between those two places yeah. as well. So I do think it's a yeah. really good reuse of this. And, um, uh, but I, I also appreciate what um, Councilman Waters is saying. The library really also needs space. So we're just gonna have to figure out how to use our money wisely. But I. I think this is great because it is right across the street from the development services, so. All right, so there's a motion on the floor to allow staff to go ahead to change the use and occupy the ex morgue of the city. Uh, so let's go ahead and vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. All right, that uh, motion carries and passes unanimously. Let's move on to 11B, Pepler Neighborhood Concept Plan Amendment. It's continued over from 1-14-20. I believe staff has an update on the discussions pertaining to that little handwritten questionable phrase. So give us an update. Uh, correct. And I'm going to ask Don to, to make his way up closer to me so he can help me fill in the blanks. Um, so obviously there was a plat note uh, that existed um, regarding the development of this property. Uh, there were some concept plans. Um, I think it was ambiguous in terms of what was actually contemplated in there in terms of the plant note and there was a number of questions. Um, we had, um, per council's direction, we had entered into conversations with the developer of that site trying to find a solution 
based on some of the um, ideas that the council threw out during the previous conversation and some ideas that I and worked out with Don and we had real time in, in there and um, and um, you know we were we were moving through that very slowly um, the conversations were difficult in terms of what we were trying to accomplish um, to, to be completely candid on Friday of last week we received a letter from legal counsel representing uh, the individual and we were um, actually prepared to come in tonight uh, to postpone this item to a date certain of March 31st so we could have the time to do the the a, a fair amount of legal research to, to really evaluate our position um, prior to this meeting we had a meeting with the applicants and what we were trying to really work on um, was trying to fit in four deed restricted uh, single bedroom affordable housing units and um, and that was something we talked about and then the question comes in well what is a civic purpose I think what I was trying to really work off of is that the council has set a goal of affordable housing being important to us and and the civic purpose was of providing affordable housing and evaluating that concept we were getting into a number of sitback issues there were issues related to how the parking was going to be structured and it just started becoming more pro problematic um, literally a few minutes before this council meeting we agreed to um, with the developer to essentially take the square footage that would have been associated with those one bedroom single family units um, at a rate of three dollars and seventy five cents a square foot which is consistent with other things that I'm working on uh, related to the affordable housing fund they would then just pay us an equivalent amount for those units um, which amounts to twenty one thousand dollars that would then be placed in the affordable housing fund to be used for the purposes established um, which is to provide uh, affordable housing to our community um, and so um, from my perspective and in working with um, Teresa in this conversation we feel that it really the civic purpose that we're satisfying is that we're actually putting additional funding into the affordable housing fund in order to um, help us um, provide affordable housing to our community granted it's not it's got to be accumulated with other funds mm -hmm. um, but that's where we are today council can consider that option um, based on where we are in the conversations um, my opinion is is um, based on the amount of legal research um, and the ambiguity and in, in, in the plat note and what we have to work through we think that is a equitable way to resolve this issue be happy to answer any questions Customer Peck. Thank you, Mayor Bagley. Um, Harold, these uh, affordable units, are they going to be uh, always affordable? Or are they going to be, when they're sold, be sold at market value? So um, because of the issues in terms of placement with the setback, there's not going to be affordable units. They're going to pay us $3.75 oh, a square that. foot okay. to uh, account for that piece. OK, I misunderstood. Thank you. Councilmember Christensen. Uh, I realize that this will not uh, please everybody <laughs> and that it, the, who lives in that community who were expecting some uh, civic element in that community. Unfortunately, because of the way this contract was written a long, long time ago, people, nobody's here from them, maybe Joni, um, <laughs> but th this contract was not written in a way that it was very clear and therefore um, I do think that because we did not it was not specified how much land or the location of land um, I don't I think this is probably a good deal because um, this does serve civic purpose it doesn't turn over the, the, the this was an agreement that gave the taxpayers some land was secured for the taxpayers of this city and I'm not willing to turn over taxpayer land for nothing so um, the taxpayers are getting something for this at large the people who live in that neighborhood are not getting something particular but they are particular to their neighborhood but the, as citizens of this city they are getting something in return which is some affordable housing units that we'll be able to um, you get for, for this um, payment in lieu 
So I uh, would vote for this. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem Rodriguez. Thank you, Mayor Bagley. <coughs> so uh, is there a payment in lieu or uh, some sort of agreement concerning the regular portion of the development, not the, the two lots that were designated as civic usage? So a little bit of history on that property. Um, when that property originally came in the development process, um, they uh, made the contribution of land, which currently houses uh, Spring Creek and Fall River, uh, which uh, met the affordability, the affordable housing requirements uh, for the broader development of Prairie Village. Um, if they had have put those four additional units, it actually would have been beyond I think the, the required uh, affordable housing piece. Council actually voted on uh, saying that they had satisfied their affordable housing requirement based on those original land donations um, in a previous action. Um, this is really above and beyond that. Okay, uh, and so in, in essence, the, the development has satisfied, according to applicable ordinance now, according to at least council's decision Correct. that the you know inclusionary requirements and so therefore uh the proposal on the table is that these two small uh outlots if you will uh will then be uh, a payment in lieu kind of concept Correct. towards the affordable housing um initiative and as such because of where we're at in the current economic market for for providing housing in our city as well as regionally uh, any sort of contribution to the affordable housing fund is to me a civic contribution and much more usable than say 5,000 square feet of what would be considered pocket park at best uh, as I said jokingly to the mayor I'm like uh, at the last conversation about this is no it's not much better than most people's backyards uh, as far as single-family detached homes are concerned as far as the size uh, and I think the problem really lies with the non prescriptive nature of the original uh, writing of, of the civic contribution it did not prescriptively say a certain amount of square footage or even a usage of, of that that uh, donation and I think that's where we really get into the weeds here a little bit as far as what the Planning and Zoning Commission had to decide on as well as what we have to decide on here at City Council. And I think that overall, uh, allowing the contribution to the Affordable Housing Fund is probably the best way forward considering the utility of what's been proposed. Uh, Dr. Waters. Thanks, Mayor Bagley. Um, I, I get the concept. Uh, I'm not certain I get the number. So I know you, whatever you're working on, you've, you've backed into a $3.75 per square foot for the, for the number of feet. I think the combined, what, what was the combined? 5,600 combined? square yeah, foot. The two, but the two parcels. <clears throat> what, I, what I am wondering about is uh, that, that you've been working on something, but we do have a number in our ordinance, an inclusionary, uh, uh, the inclusionary zoning ordinance for a payment in lieu of seven dollars and sixty-two cents or ninety-two cents per square foot as a payment in lieu. Hmm? Yeah, I, I, we didn't look at that because we had already they had already satisfied that component. I get so, that. Yeah, I get. I right. get that. Right. I'm not questioning right. the over over time uh, the serious commitment the developers made to land donations and what we've been mm -hmm. able to do with it as we're as we are moving people into the Fall River apartments as I speak or you know, right. at this time but it still begs the question uh, if we're if we're going to do this in the name of a cash donation or contribution to the affordable housing fund uh, why we would not defer to our ordinance of seven dollars and 62 cents 92 cents thank it, you it, so it's 790 per square foot for finished market rate for sale housing and a dollar 90 per square foot for finished market rate rental housing yes. those are the numbers i recall right I, well i was not quite recall <laughs> the uh, finished market rate housing at 792 as opposed to 62. i still 
wonder why. I understand that's more money uh, that some from a developer. It's also more money in greater, greater civic uh, value. Right. Why not that number? And I think part of it was too is that was sort of when I looked at it based on the 375, that was raw land, and and, and that's that's how we applied the raw land component to this, and so that was the, the genesis of the 375. Thanks, uh, Councilmember Peck. Thank you. Um, this is actually my statement has to do to the developer. Um, when we got this in our ordinance the last time, w according to our council com. We had two sections, uh, one on east, one on each side of this development that you were going to donate. I was not, I was not happy that the developer came up and at the last minute said, "Oh no, it's only going to be one part." So everybody was was taken aback, really, both staff and council. And this last minute uh, update that we didn't have a chance to look at, or even discuss in our ordinances or in our council com, to me that is unacceptable. Um, if, a, if a developer is going to be bringing something to us, they need to do it in time for the council to be able to look at it, to study it, to understand what's going on, as well as staff. So I, I just wanted to put that out there that we need to have more respect for staff and not just pop things in on them at the last minute, especially at the council meeting. So. My one statement. I think I think part part of the other question is I think it, it was um, deed restricted rental, not for sale, is what they were looking at. And the dollar ninety. And I've got I've got a question. What's the city what's the city code on PUD now? If we wanted do we allow PUDs? What we didn't we take action what, I mean, how does how does that work now? Mayor Bagley, Don Burchett, Planning Manager. We allow planned unit developments today, um, and someone could apply for a PUD zoning and come in with an application for that. Specifically, how is this property zoned today? Today, they are zoned, um, the it would be commercial, uh, I'm gonna get my, my zoning. One, one is zoned commercial, one portion of it, the other portion is zoned residential mixed neighborhood, right. which so, is the so multi So cou council took action to make this piece of property zoned, mm -hmm. right? Correct. So right. the PUD plan, I mean, legally, I don't think they owe us anything. Mm -hmm. And so them being willing to pay 21,000, um, well, I mean, we did away with that PUD. It's a new owner. They've got use by right. They've got commercial and residential zoned lots. And so I mean, they're willing to, I mean, I don't know if I'm, I'm right or wrong. But That's I mean not that, the city's position, Mayor. No, I, I understand. But what I'm saying is, but we don't have a PUD on this property right now. We do have a PUD on this property? No, I know the city's position is that we do. But my position in looking at it is that 21000 to get out of a legal quagmire where their position would be that they don't, 21000 is a good... Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I look at both sides, and everybody's got a good argument. And so they're, if they're willing to write a check for twenty-one thousand, avoid legal fees, and move forward with the development, and we get our affordable housing, and we don't have to spend any more time on this, I'm all for it. Um, you were touching on some of the questions as to why we were going to need to um, delay it to the thirty-first. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we don't have to now. I mean, unless we decide to, or yeah, yeah. So. All right, um, do we have a motion one way or another? <coughs> Mayor, I yeah. make a recommendation yeah, that if the council chooses to choose the option that uh, city manager presented, you would want to make a motion to remove that note from the concept plan, with, but condition upon the payment of the 21000 to the city of Longmont. Should we do that first? Mm -hmm. All right. Go ahead, Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, thank you, Mayor Bagley. I, I would move to remove note 12, note 12, that was good. Which is note 12 with the condition that we accept a 21,000, uh, what's the exact number? 21,000 even? 21,000, 
21,000, correct. 21,000 even in t as a contribution to the affordable housing fund. And Mayor, I'm sorry to interrupt. We, it is a public sh hearing item that we would need to open. So just letting we'll, you know that we we'll do that. We'll do that. Okay, but thank the, you, sorry. Uh, but uh, but uh, we can vote on that first before we, ha do we have to vote on that? I don't think we do. I mean, we can vote on that, then have the public hearing on, no, public hearing first. All right, let's go ahead and open the public hearing for Ordinance 2020-07A and Ordinance 2020-07B. And we'll postpone voting on this particular motion until after we've had a public hearing. Thank you, Mayor Bagley. Um, council members, I would still urge you to uh, reconsider what I've heard tonight. Um, you guys made a promise to that neighborhood, to that community, to the city. And I appreciate the fact that the civic purpose would go to affordable housing or to the affordable housing fund. Um, but council member Waters is correct. You know, why, why the $3 and whatever cents per square foot do it like you normally do it? Um, if you feel like that's the right way to go, it, it sounds like to me with this whole process that the postponing and at least till March 31st or whatever that date was to figure that out to make this consistent with whatever other uh, donation in lieu that you guys normally do on these type of developments. I mean, it should be consistent, all right? I mean, I, I think that it's wrong. I think that people made decisions in that neighborhood based on that concept plan based on what the city said it was going to be, and now it's something completely different. I understand there's new zoning and there's all sorts of stuff that's happened in the uh, past years. I get that, but I'm just asking you to do what's right. Do what's right for the community surrounding that uh, project and do what's right for the city of Longmont. Taking $21,000 just, to me, isn't enough. I mean, it, it's not consistent with, with any other donation in lieu or land or whatever that's called, right? It's not consistent with what you've done before. And this developer, DR Horton, or its subsidiary, D DHI, I mean, they, they have the money. I mean, why are they nickel and diming the city? They're just trying to get a, a, around this because they already have 100% engineering design drawings ready to go. And I mean, that, that to me, it's, it's insulting. It should be insulting to you and it's insulting to the city. So there, there's another way to go about this. I understand that we, <laughs> that you guys want to make a decision, but I, go back and ask for something else. I mean, when you brought up the, Ms. Peck, when you brought up the, the fact that they had two uh, lots and then they came up right at the end and said, oh no, we only meant one. I mean, is the 21,000 only for one or is it both or, you know, like, I mean, it, it blows my mind how non-transparent this entire process is. I mean, I honestly believe that the planning department, and this is my personal opinion, I'll state that for the record, but I think the planning department promised them that they could get this uh, concept plan note taken off and that's why they went ahead with 100% engineering design and everything. I mean, the, the transparency here is terrible. The ethics violations from the planning department trying to get this railroaded through to your chambers to get this voted on. If, I mean, it's, it's really sad. I love the city. I don't love how this process has gone. It's not right. I'd urge you to tell them to go back, rethink it, make it, if they're gonna do a donation in lieu, make it consistent with what they're doing in, in uh, or what you're doing in other projects and call it good all right don't just take this to make it easy all right thank, thank you. you all right anyone else all right seeing no one we'll go ahead no one else we'll go ahead and close the public hearing uh eugene may mayor and council eugene may city attorney just a couple of procedural things so this is first reading we continued it um at the last meeting on january 14th um hearing uh, council member rodriguez's motion so there is an ordinance in the packet the a, there's two ordinances a has just a single condition if you wanted to add the twenty-one thousand to a it 
effectuates the removal of Note 12, requires uh, submittal requirements be met within a year. If you were to add the 21,000, then we have an ordinance to come back on second reading and we would um, modify that ordinance depending upon your motion. So we're only voting on one or the other? One or the other. Right. The and so B had multiple conditions. That was the landscape easement uh, uh, and a developer maintained park. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, do you want to redo your ordinance with the motion to pass Ordinance 2020-07A with your changes? Yes, I move Ordinance 2020-07A with the condition that the $21,000 contribution to the Affordable Housing Fund be included as a condition to 2020-07A. I'll second that. All right, any additional uh, comments or questions from council members? All right, seeing no further debate, let's go ahead and vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. Nay. All right, the, the uh, motion passes six to one, or I'm sorry, five to one with Councilmember Martin uh, absent, which I should have announced that, that you got that, right, Don? Yeah, All right, <laughs> and then with uh, uh, Dr. Waters dissenting. All right, let's move on to 2020, or uh, item 11C, uh, legislative bills recommended for city council positions. Hello, Mayor and Council, Sandy Cedar, Assistant City Manager, and I have four bills for your consideration today. Um, they are, I just handed them out to you, but they have also been posted in the designated spot and on the web. So the first bill is House Bill 20, 1192, concerning the use of money in the Petroleum Cleanup and Redevelopment Fund for development of fuel cell electric vehicle projects. Obviously this, so this bill basically would um, say that we could pull any kinds of money that comes out of the public safety funds for oil and gas cleanups to be able to be used for this kind of innovative work on electric vehicle projects. Um, since this really supports the council's sustainability goal, staff recommends that the city council support 20, House Bill 20, 1192. Senate Bill 2124, concerning adding the public school facility construction guidelines as a requirement to consult with the local electric utility. Um, our electric utility, LPC, thinks this is a good idea to get in at the beginning of these kinds of construction projects, and so therefore, uh, city staff recommends that city council support Senate Bill 124. Senate Bill 151, concerning the regulation of the Regional Transportation District. This one's pretty tough because it really requires a whole lot of new things of, of RTD, which of course I think we think that needs to happen, some additional auditing and some other things. Um, just as far as transparency of the operations of RTD. But at the same time, the way that the bill is written is pretty bureaucratic and has a whole lot of reporting requirements that might actually not get you there. Um, so several of the organizations, transportation organizations, are planning to oppose unless it's amended. I think the concept makes sense, but we are unsure that the method makes sense. So we would like to just monitor this for a little while. Sorry, keep going. I was okay. just going to mention something on that one. Okay. Go ahead. Um, and then the last one, Senate Bill 2153, concerning the creation of an enterprise uh, that is exempt from the requirements of Section 20, of Article 10 of the State Constitution to administer a fee-based water resource financing program. Um, this one would basically pull different fees and general funds to create a revolving loan fund, which doesn't really make a whole lot of sense when we are the ones that are planning for our own future and our own water utilities. We would encourage everybody else to do the same. Um, and so staff recommends that City Council opposes Senate Bill 2153. Um, I, I, so this came up at the uh, mayors and or the mayors and commissioners committee, the S Senate Bill 20-151. Um, all it's doing is adding four new positions to the RTD board. It's going from 15 to 19, which the what? I oppose. Right? <laughs> yeah. And so so do I. And so, I mean, I, I know that there was some talk at the Metro Mayors or the, the Mayors and Commissioners mm -hmm. Committee or the MCC um, because I know that there were allies who were championing the bill and we didn't want to hurt their feelings and people were kind of hesitant. And, but at the end of the day, I personally think that what needs to happen, and again, I think they need to redistrict, like just like we do at a state and national level, RTD, the RTD board, keep 15, but adding more, subtracting more, unless they redistrict to make it proportionate, there's no solution. So going from 15, you know, disproportionate seats to 19 is just going from bad to worse. And so I, I actually move that we oppose Senate Bill 20-151. Tell 
Council Member Peck? I agree with the mayor. So that's um, a second. You, that's called a second. I'll call that a second. All right. It's been moved and seconded by myself and Council Member Peck. So uh, NADA, the Northern Area Transportation Authority, also opposes this because of the uh, addi addition of new board members. But um, uh, the, part, the point here in this statement that um, reporting audits, I also want to say that NADA is getting a very deep audit of RTD. Some of these things we're already going to do. We don't need a bill. So that's my input. Right. Mayor Bagby, yeah. members of council, certainly from RTD, that's what we've heard, is that all of the stipulations of the bill are already things that are required of them. And so the only real change is the board member change. Right. So, so I mean, I don't know why we were, I mean, anyway, I know why we're hesitant, but I still think we should express concern. So Absolutely. there's a motion and a second. So the motion is to go ahead and uh, direct staff to oppose Senate Bill 20-151. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> All right, cool. So that motion passes unanimously with Councilmember Martin absent. Um, uh, we still have three others, however. Do we have a motion? Uh, Councilmember Peck? I move the slate of bills minus uh, SB 2151 Follow right. the staff recommendation. As, as, recommended by staff. as recommended by staff. I'll second that for you. All right. It's been moved by Councilmember Peck, seconded by the mayor. Uh, what, any, any further question, dialogue, or debate? Councilmember Christensen? No, I'm just trying to fix my mic. <laughs> All right. Dr. Waters? Just to clarify, we are we're talking about supporting the two bills that the staff recommends we support and opposing the third. Right. Thank Correct. You. Yes. yes. All right, seeing no further discussion or debate, let's go ahead and vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, that passes unanimously with Councilmember uh, Martin absent. I do have one other question. Where have we, did we take a position on Senate Bill 93? Hang on one second. That, that's Mike Foote's uh, arbitration bill. I just want back up from council before I do something. Council has not taken a position on 93. Right. So I guess the, uh, uh, I don't know why. So the Metro Mayor's Caucus, which I usually don't go to because we can talk about that in private if you'd like. But uh, anyway, uh, the Boulder County mayors are have asked that I, uh, so the way the Metro Mayor's Caucus works is by consensus. And if five or less, if, if less than five mayors don't oppose it, then there's a press release that basically says the Metro Mayor's Caucus uh, is, uh, is against it, or, or for it or against it. So in this particular case, for some reason, the Metro Mayor's Caucus is coming out asking for a consensus vote. Um, uh, opposing Senate Bill 93, which basically just set some arbitration requirements, which I really don't understand why this rises to the importance of, of uh, I don't get it, but I do know it's really important to, to uh, the other mayors in Boulder County and have asked that I uh, join them in opposing uh, their opposition, and I was going to do that. Um, what is the arbitration for? Yeah. So. The, the uh, it has to do with uh, again, sex assault victims. I think so. Let me okay, do you want to? Can you read? Can you pull it and just let us know? And Mayor Bagby, I attended the Colorado Municipal League Muni Caucus today. There was no discussion about this bill. Right. It, it, it just it, like I said, it's strange why this would be a issue of debate because. So. This is the Consumer and Employee Dispute Resolution Fairness Act concerning protections related to mandatory agreement provisions in and connected with enacting a Consumer and Employee Dispute Resolution Fairness Act. Close, but keep going. Yeah. <laughs> Not you, me. <laughs> yeah, pretty good. Um, the bill enacts the Consumer and Employee Dispute Resolution Fairness Act for certain consumer and employment arbitrations. The act prohibits the waiver of standards for and challenges the evident partiality prior to a claim being filed. It, it is mediation is what it looks like. It's so, so basically, mediation. That's right. So basically, it's basically saying you can challenge um, an arbiter based on bias and whatnot. Again, it's not, it's a big Provides nothing burger. 
Yes. But it's important to somebody, and it's really important to the other mayors in Boulder County, and they're asking, and it's important to Mike Foote, and they're asking that I join them just to make it so that the Metro Mayor's Caucus does not have a consensus to oppose this bill. Is anyone opposed? Dr. Waters? Is Mike Foote sponsoring this bill? Yes, it's yes. his bill. So he's asking the mayors <laughs> to oppose the bill? No, no. Metro Mayor's Caucus came out to oppose it. And the Boulder County mayors reached out and said, hey, Mayor Bagley, we need a fifth. Vote with this so the Metro mayors don't have a consensus, so there's no position. Right. It just goes away. So, so the council could support the bill, for this example, is, or not oppose Or not even do anything and just tell me it's okay to add my name to the list, which I could do, but you could do. I, I, we haven't taken a position on it, and I don't know a whole lot about it. And and Mayor Bagley, in reading this, and, and you all may remember that at the legislative dinner, Senator Foote did discuss this bill with you just briefly um, around the idea that it provides the right of the party to challenge the arbitrator, right? Because oftentimes arbitration is binding and that's that. And this gives another opportunity, I think, for people to work out dispute resolution. Was his intention. So if we support what the, our mayor is asking, uh, it would simply allow the bill to go forward and be heard without the Metro Mayor's uh, expressing Opinion. their opposition. Correct. Yes. Thank you. So uh, they just they, the the mayors simply don't want the Metro Mayor's Caucus to oppose the bill. So the city of Longmont does not have to support the bill. No, we're not. Uh, we, this this is not. This is just anyone have a problem? You're just checking. If it. I oppose it. No. Okay. No. Anyone? No. All right. I just had a question on um, what the status is. So is it in committee? Is it? On the Senate floor, I, I literally have is, no it is, idea. Okay. It is in Judiciary oh, Committee. Okay. Hmm. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and seeing no opposition, I'm going to go ahead and send that email just saying that I oppose the opposition. Okay. So, Sounds all right, good. cool, we thanks. The I'm going to oppose the opposition. The opposition. Right. Yes, right. and that, and again, then we'll just support let the, the bill. We'll, okay. yeah. Not to even support, support the bill, the bill. just, just the oppose the opposition. So Metro Mayor's Caucus doesn't have a consensus. All right, so uh, let's move on. Anything else on that or other issues? All right, let's move on to final call public invited to be heard. Uh, I just want to point out, Scouts, that you are seeing one of the shortest city council meetings mm -hmm. ever. And so someday you're going to be... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so someday you're going to be sitting on city council, running for mayor, whatever, and you're going to be like, wait a second. I thought it was supposed to be way shorter than this. <laughs> But that's not going to happen. So I'm just warning you now. So uh, let's go ahead and do final call public invited to be heard. Anyone want to speak? All right. We're going to go ahead and close final call public invited to be heard. Um, let's go on to uh, mayor and council comments. Councilmember Peck. Thank you, Mayor Bagley. I want to respond actually to Regina Cheney and Justin Stober. Uh, last at the last council meeting I made a motion that we uh, move forward with getting a uh, facilitator to faci facilitate an ethics and rules of procedure meeting among council so that is already in the works yeah. we get it that we need help and an ethics committee so um, the other thing that I want to explain is about emails First of all, I have no doubt over four and a half years that there are 3,000 emails. But the core request is for everything that is on the city server. If it's on the city server, it means that it has my city of Longmont address. Now, I had, may have gotten and have gotten many emails from people to my private email address, but I forwarded those to the city server. That's why you see my private email address along with whoever whoever wrote me. That, and we're all like that. I mean, I've seen core requests from the mayor, from Councilman Waters, and they, they send it to the city server as well with their um, city email address. Those did not come from the Indra, Indra saver, server or Google server because I don't have any of those, which is what I told. Um, and I sat down with the city attorney, and we looked at the ones that he had questions about, and I said, release them all. Uh, the Longmont Observer has 
released a lot of my emails, so if anybody's interested to see, it's kind of boring, who emailed me and what I said. Uh, Councilwoman Martin has put them on all social media. So anybody who wants to go read my emails, they're, they're fine. You can go read them. Um, I'm not going to apologize because they're not on my personal email. They are on the city server, which is what the core request was for. They were business that I forwarded to my city servers so they would be transparent. Um, there were no emails that anybody got off of the Indra server or the Google server. They all came from Joan Peck at LongmontColorado.gov. So there you have it, transparent. They're all on the city server. You can go read them. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mayor Bagley. Uh, this is just a note for my fellow council members as well as the staff that there was a death in the family and I'll be out of town Friday through Sunday. So I'm really sorry. Sorry to hear that. Dr. Waters? I, uh, just for the purpose, for the sake of my own clarity and how I approach this issue of emails, um, uh, w w there have been several CORA requests uh, th that people interested in my emails, text messages, calendar. So it's been my understanding that if, if there is an email on my private email account, that has to do with city business, that's part of the public record. Mm -hmm. So I'm just asking our city attorney, is that not, am I correct or incorrect? You are correct. Um, so w w if whether I have or have not forwarded, and I, and I do the same thing when I have my wits about me, f copying my email, my mm -hmm. city email account. Um, but if there's been correspondence that I, I didn't think was city business, so I didn't, any of those that have anything to do with the city of Longmont would be part of that public record, no matter what server they're on, correct? Correct, location doesn't matter, it's about the subject matter. Okay, I just wanted to, just, just to be clear, thank you. All right, anybody else? All right, um, city manager remarks. No comments, Mayor Council. Eugene. No comments, Mayor. All right, let's go ahead and adjourn. Oh, actually, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. All right, anybody opposed to adjourning? Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded, and we're adjourning. <laughs>